Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. The BSN Network proudly presents the WECP with your hosts, Aaron Holiday and Jerry Flynn, the heels of podcasting. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode... 16 of WECP. I'm Aaron. I'm Jerry. And we have a special guest this week, Man of Steel, Mike Verna. How you doing, Mike? Aaron, Jerry, I'm doing good, man. I was pretty uh, pumped up with that little theme song there. It kind of sounded like the uh, Four Horsemen. Yeah, no, like you like Super it? Super Nintendo Four Horsemen version. <laughs> yeah, one of, our, uh, one of our buddies that's on the network uh, created that uh, intro for us. That's pretty dope. I like it. I yeah. like it. What's going on with you guys? Uh, you know, trying to stay dry. It's raining out, you know. It's crummy. Yeah, same here. In New York, it's pretty shitty out here, too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, Mike, you're you're from New York. Uh, where did you train at? I'm um, from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I started my training at MYWC on Deer Park, Long Island. So, from going from Brooklyn to Long Island, that part of Long Island, it's about an hour and a half, almost two hours if you think of traffic. So it's honestly just as close as me going out to Bethany, which is which is pretty sick, considering it's New York. But um, I started out there uh, back in about 2011. Um, I started being trained by Alex Reynolds, who uh, does a lot of stuff at CZW and uh, Beyond Wrestling and, uh, and House of Hardcore, and uh, Tony Nese, that you guys might know. Yeah. Um, yeah yep. And also my, Mikey Whipwreck. He was the one who um, basically oversaw the whole school. But those are the two everyday trainers, and Mikey was kind of like the guy that came in. He was God. He came in, and it's like whatever Mikey said went. Uh, so I started out there, and then um, about 2012, end of 2012, maybe maybe early 2013, I had to take a quick, a little hiatus. Let's put it that way, because uh, the training schedules back then were Tuesdays and Sundays, um, and there were specific times, and everything else that was closed. So between real life, um, job, and school at the time, it was almost impossible to get there on a regular basis enough to keep up with it. So I kind of felt like I felt like it was being taken away from me. So I just took a step back. I, I basically stopped training for a little bit, and then um, I found out about Joel Maximo at the SAT from the old Ring of Honor days. Um, he had a school in Brooklyn, wow. which was yeah, which was about twenty twenty five minutes away from my house mm-hmm. that I had no idea existed. So basically. What I thought was over, we, we uh, restarted back in, like, 2013. I made my official debut uh, October of 2013. Wow, man. Yeah, so going from a almost two-hour drive all the time to a 25, yeah, 20, 25 minutes, so you that's awesome. Big time, big time. And now, in hindsight, the funny thing is is I, I, I don't really have a home training right now because uh, Joel's, Joel bounced from a couple of schools. Uh, he took a step back away now, too, to focus on some outside projects. So I've been going back to MYWC. I've been doing a school out in uh, Staten Island called Warriors of Wrestling, uh, uh, creative play. I'm just floating around now when it comes to training. So, oh, yeah, so everything you, came full circle. Oh, so you so you do, you have trained at the Creative Pro? I I haven't done many consistent training there, but I've I've been there before. It's a great freaking school. Uh, Brian and Pat got it down pat. Yeah, you know, they're they're solid out there. So that's the school that Kurt Hawkins in the WWE. That, that's, yeah, Kurt, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's his that's school. Brian school. Yeah, Brian oh, wow, Myers, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I only knew that because of uh, Grimm's Toy Show on YouTube. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, you know, I, I was reading up about you, uh, you know, because obviously we saw you live, but um, I was reading up about how you were uh, tag team partners with Big O, and Big O um, is friends with, like, uh, with Zack Ryder. He's been on his YouTube channel and stuff. So you've been making some connections yeah. there. Um, are, are you going to be trying to get on to ROH soon? Where Where's... Uh, well, Where's Man of Steel yeah, going I mean, next? Uh, that, that would be that would be that's a good question. So ROH, as you know, they do their uh, tryout seminar camps. Mm-hmm. They do them pretty pretty quarterly, maybe if I'm not mistaken. So I just did the one in, in December, and it went great. Um, basically, the end. Of, what they do is they whoever's there. Sometimes it's 35 people, sometimes it's 40 people, sometimes it's even 50 people. They run through two days of drills and promos, 
and you do it in front of a kind of, uh, various uh, certain amount of coaches. And at the end of the day, at the end of the second day, they evaluate you. They essentially give you a yes or no if they would use you um, on TV tomorrow. Um, so let's say there was 40 people there. Um, myself and two others were the only ones that got yeses. Wow, that's so awesome. The interest, yeah, so it was, a, it was an awesome experience because forget about the whole yes side of it. Um, the learning side of it was awesome because you reach a point in your career where I don't want to say that you feel like you know it all, but you kind of plateau with learning because you're, you're wrestling a lot of guys that are the same as you um, or even under you at times, and you're kind of leading the charge. And you, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of times you get to face people who are better and more experienced than you, and you learn from them constantly. But there's sometimes in, uh, in where I'm at right now where you kind of have that plateau stagnant line of kind of wrestling the same guys over and over again because it, as you know in the northeast there's a certain amount of top guys yeah. and those top guys cert- kind of they circulate around each other so you're constantly wrestling each other you know from whether it's in chaotic wrestling whether it's in uh, NEW, whether it's down in xwa and beyond and then you come down my way and it's that house of glory or it's that five ball wrestling or mywc so everyone's just kind of bumping shoulders with each other all the time so you kind of find that complacency of like oh let's just do that again let's just do that again so when I was at the camp, you know, learning from guys like Christopher Daniels, B.J. Whitmer, um, you know, it, it's delirious, obviously. You see the little fine, intricate things that you're not really doing on a regular basis on an indie show during the weekend because you're so comfortable now. And then you take a step back and see what they're saying. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, shit, that makes a lot of sense. But this makes me that much better. Yeah, they're not so delirious. When I hold a guy up, you know, when I hold a guy up 10 seconds for a suplex and then bump him and then look in the camera and make sure my hair flip is still in place, that all of a sudden is going to get you more over than the move. Well, absolutely. So it's those little things that you're like, yo, yes. Right. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of the a lot of wrestlers talk about how you know, especially the guys that went in the territory days. That was the benefit of you spend a little bit of time in one area, got over there, and then you can move on to another area to learn different styles, different work with different guys, so you can actually, you know, like you said, you don't plateau. You actually just keep building up your repertoire. Oh, exactly, exactly. You know, and, and and that's the thing, just to touch on what you said with that, those territory aspects of it. I think we're kind of getting a little bit of that right now in 2018, and I think that's a blessing because, you know, when I first broke in, wrestling kind of wasn't what it is right now. It was it was cool for the for the marks and the fans and the nerds and everything that just kind of was afraid to say they like wrestling, but now it's so popular again. It's pop culture enjoyable. Um, it's you know, people people of all freaking creeds, ages, you know, genres, they all like it. You know, it's, it's something that's, thank God, being popular again. And the indies is a big point of that because a lot of people weren't aware of what the independent wrestling circle was like back in, back in the day because Ring of Honor was kind of teetering on, on success and success at the same time. TNA was, you know, WWE's main competition. So it was just kind of those two things. And um, no one really knew what the indies were. Now that the indies are kind of, you know, flourishing right now um it's bringing that second you know that that second wind in in, in pro wrestling and um territory is kind of what i feel like is developing right now like i think the two dominant ones in the united states right now is obviously the midwest territory and the northeast and in a way what you're seeing is is you're kind of seeing the ohio and the iowa and then the chicago guys all kind of being that brief they're all just kind of staying there which, I, which is what I like, because even though we did say we have to go out and move around and, and get our name out there, which is absolutely true, I'm also a big believer of what if we just take the territory and the region and make, that, make ourselves so freaking over in that area, make it the companies that we work for over there so popular and help them grow that all of a sudden when the two territories clash, now you got magic. Yeah. Now you got something you can really do. Yeah, it's instead like, of guys, instead of guys trying to get on every single company, every single where it's like, yeah, it's great for you for professionally, and and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's something obviously I do, but at the same time, if you can kind of take your whole area and make that strong, and you fucking sit on top of the, the throne with a couple of guys, and you and you carry that flag for a while, and when those two territories clash, or those four territories, five territories, however however many they are, when they clash, you're going to see something good. Yeah, it's like with Jerry the King Lawler. Like, obviously, he ran Memphis, and the same thing with like the Funks down in Texas. It was they were so huge, and they just made that territory bigger. Like you're saying, make where you are successful and build it up to that point. Oh, 100 percent. And then you, and then like I said, then you can do your whole like cross, you know, promotional stuff where the New York guys and the New England guys are going down to the Midwest area, and now all of a sudden the Midwest guys are coming up here. And we had a little bit of that now because you know Sammy. Uh, Sammy uh, was doing obviously CCW, 
Um, he was he had a big role in CZW, still has a big role in CZW from um, and you know, and so you're getting all those Ohio guys coming up down here to the Tri City, which is great. It's bringing new guys, um, you know, new eyes on on guys like that over there. And then you know, we'll have guys like Ace and MJF going down to the Midwest now. That's where they live now. So like, you're getting a nice. A nice little blend of talent, you know, going back and forth. But I now, now I feel like this year more more than anything, now that you have those guys that moved to Ohio and you have um, the Ohio brand as it is right there, and then you have the New England, New York guys, I feel like those two territories are going to blow up and it's going to be massive. It's going to be huge for wrestling. And, and I think if, if, if the two territories can keep themselves separate for a couple of months to see what, what we can get out of it, and then, like I said, when they kind of clash, now we're talking. I feel like we're going to see something good. Yeah, I mean, and that's like that. You know, I feel like in the wrestling world, that is a huge thing. Like territories, I I love to see territory wars with one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and that's why I feel like I, I feel like we're going down that road. And if we do get there, we'll see what happens. And I also know the Man of Steel wants to take over Italy at some point. Oh, um, yeah, hell yeah, that's my main goal right there. See, man, uh, for sure, because I feel like I'm going to Italy next month. That's first of all, from the 17th to 31st. Nice. Uh, I got a little mini 15 day tour there. Oh, I'm nice. Working about four shows, and I'm in vacation the rest of the time. Where, and I also have two seminars, which is kind of cool. That um, the Italians, think an American like myself, uh, is good enough to teach a seminar for them. So I do appreciate them on that. So I do have a, I have a pretty packed schedule, but at the same time, I'm going to have some leisure time to enjoy, uh, you know, the homeland. Absolutely. But um, I definitely do want to do exactly what you said in regards to TakeOver Italy, because I feel like um, I've, I've been through a WWE trial camp, and, you know, I don't want to get too deep into that, because that's stuff that, you know, is what it is. Right. Uh, but the one thing that they really, the one thing that we, we still stay contact in about is one of the biggest things they liked about me. And just to be clear, it went fucking excellent. That was another thing, too. That was one of the best experiences I've had in my life. I was well prepared for it. It worked out good. The coaches loved me. But WWE is a different brand than like an ROH or a TNA where they're casting people, as they say, or they're, they're signing people based on specific demographics and specific needs. Right. So as a professional wrestler, the, the path to WWE is a little bit different than what you may think, no matter how talented you may be or may not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a different road to get there, and I'm totally cool with that. I'm looking forward to for that road. But one of the main things that they loved about me was the fact that I had the Italian heritage, which um, in WWE right now, or wrestling in general, besides Bruno, there really isn't anyone from that that you know that creed. Well, so that's... one of the things they really liked about me was that. So they they one of the things they told me in closing just uh, was that they wanted me to take advantage of that. So one of the first things I did after that trial in June is I started getting my connections down in Italy and I started putting together this tour. Right. Well, I mean, as long as they don't throw a Santino Morella character on you, I mean, we'll, I think we'll be okay. Oh, exactly, exactly. Hell yeah. I, I mean, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Santino did a hell of a job representing the country. Don't get me wrong. Oh no, yeah. he listen. He for, for, <laughs> for for what for what he did, it was it worked for him. Uh, but and I I feel like with you know, with you and like your look and like the character, um, which I want to get into in a little bit, uh, by, by your character, but I yeah. feel like, I feel like with, you know, who you are, it, it, like, I can't see them. If I was running creative, I want to be like, well, you know, Mike, what we're going to do is you're going to be like a parody character. Like, no, because you have like that serious, like you, you have the look of a destroyer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. And then thank you for that. Definitely. I mean, the, the interesting thing on that, which is awesome, just to touch back on the creative thing, is I do wrestle for Chikara. And I wrestle um, under the name Sloan Caprice with Rex Wallace. So right. we're, a, uh, we're a tag team called The Closers. And what's interesting is, is our characters are exactly what you said. We're like those bruisers, destroyers. Yeah. We're just heel. We're monster heels. Uh, but the thing is, the cool thing about it is because of what Chikara is, how uh, fun and like family friendly and everyone's over the top and the characters are like, you know, crazy. Like it brings that side of creativity out of the characters. Like even though we're monster freaking destroyer heels, like we still are able to look at like an end and have like a comedy moment with them. And that those parts are fun. But in regards to a comedy character, like we have people for that. You know what I'm saying? Like there are wrestlers out there that, that kill that. They, they do a great job at that and that's their role. And I would never want to really, you know, do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I hear you. Um, okay, so can we touch base on the Man of Steel part of you? Um, yeah. So oh, yeah. how how did that, like, did you come up with, you know, Man of Steel? Because I consider you to be, like, you know, Brooklyn's Man of Steel type thing. And um, you definitely have, like, the Superman look to you. Um, I feel like if you just kind of curled your hair in the front a little bit, you know, that little... A little yeah. John Travolta thing going on. You'd be yeah. you'd be Superman spot on. Uh, so can you get into that character for a little bit? 
Well, yeah, of course. Um, that is uh, one of the main questions I get whenever I do one of these. And I, I do laugh every time because it, most people do say the same thing where it's like, oh, well, I get it. I, I, as soon as you walk out of the curtain, I get the character. And, and that's pretty much how it kind of came about. So when I was about to debut in 2013 with, uh, with Joel, yep. um, we were, we were kind of coming up with a name. And he's creative. He's a creative genius. He's, he's, a, he's an innovator. Like you could tell by his in-ring stuff, stuff that he came up with in the ring, he still has that same mentality from behind the scenes and character development and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was coming up with these names that were like totally ridiculous. It was like Ethan Chase was one of them, uh, Mike Fox. Um, here's the crazy one, and, and I, I don't want to get heat for saying this, but I resemble a wrestler who's kind of Voldemort type in wrestling right now um just from a style of uh in-ring style and kind of uh the build i think you know where i'm getting at so he wanted to name me mike benoit and i was like we were just i was just like yeah no so there was there was a lot oh. of things getting thrown around and i was like i think the one thing i want is i want to make sure my name stays mike yeah because i don't want to become i don't want to become you know jerry verna or aaron verna you know what i'm saying like i want to stay i want to stay with my name right. you know the, the more success you get you want to you want to stay your name i don't want people calling me something i'm not absolutely so i said think uh, yeah so i said think of that and you know once again he was coming up with these really shitty names so i was like you know what let me let me get something to eat let me go home let me let me think it out myself so i was thinking of some ideas and then the next day at training i was uh still kind of stumped and I was wearing a Superman shirt yep. uh, in the ring. And when I was sweating, my hair did exactly what you said, which is the little curl in the front. Oh yeah. So now all of a sudden we're just kinda we're just kinda wrestling and like it kinda stops. Like time stood still and we're kinda looking around, we're like, Are you thinking what I'm thinking? And he was like, Yeah, yeah and then the next thing you know it, you know, I'm sitting I've been sitting in the checkers with my friend P J Stackle, who's uh he's a promoter in New York. He was my manager when I broke in. And I told him, I was like, you know what, let's just do it, Man of Steel. Let's run with the Man of Steel. I mean, you look at it, you look at it from a wrestling standpoint, like wrestling is comic books. Uh, wrestling fans are comic book fans. Um, and not to sound egotistical, but like like you said, like the look is there. Oh. If no one has that look, why no. not take advantage of it? Exactly. And like I said, when... Why not jump on it? And and, and when we were at the uh, Over the Top uh, show um, where, you know, my friend Joe over here, I know you remember Joe, yelled his name out in the, in the I ring. I know Joe. Yeah. Joe is the one who wanted me to do the chop. Hey, man, what's up, man? <laughs> what up, Joe? Um, I remember when your music, like when you first came out, when you had your, your singles match, the minute you walked, uh -huh. the minute he walked out of the curtain, I was like, holy crap. Like, this guy <laughs> looks just like Superman. And it's cool because his armor, oh, like... Thank you for that. Like, okay, so who... who <laughs> I have to know who designed your uh, entrance, um, like your your shield there with you know because I know like the, the, the nip, shield yeah the nips hang out and everything and uh, you know like yep. so like did you come up with that design or did someone kind of like present that to you like did you go through like a few designs did you choose this design like how did that become like a, like your look? Hell yeah! So um, I had. I was always when I first debuted. Um, it's actually ironic because even though I was called the Man of Steel, I per, I had no personification to Superman whatsoever. Right. Which is funny because it shows it shows how you grow in the business and you start to really um, take your character in. Yep. So I used to come out with, like I said, the guy PJ Stackpole. He was my manager. So we almost were booked as a Brock Paul Heyman look, okay. where I was just like the monster, and he was the he was the mouthpiece, and, and we just kind of rocked with that. But there was no real Superman thing. All I did was call myself the Man of Steel, almost kind of like how Chuck Liddell would call himself the Iceman. It was just one of those things where it was just like, he's just the Man of Steel. It's really nothing to it. And then over time, I would start kind of adapting the, the Superman thing because even though I had that tweener character right off the bat, I became a baby face, I'd say, the next month because the fans just, at that time in 2013, the term body guy didn't really exist, right. in my area at least. Right, so right. when someone like myself walked out of the curtain, the fans kind of just did did had no other choice but to cheer. Right. They just have worked in this specific companies that I work for. They weren't used to seeing someone that I guess looked like me. So automatically they started kind of uh, you know gravitating towards me. I started getting over as a baby face. And the more and more I did that, ironically enough, the more high fives and kissing babies I did rather than coming out looking like a beast. <laughs> and then one thing led to another, and you know just the in ring style became a very Superman type of style. So it came with um, obviously you know get my ass beat and rising up. Um, and obviously strength and flight. So I did a lot of diving. I did a lot of straw man stuff. So the, the in-ring stuff and the outside of the ring stuff personified Superman. So that was starting to come together. And now I started sitting there thinking to myself, okay, I have the in-ring stuff down. I have the regular character stuff down. But what am I going to do to make 
the character really Superman-y without being super corny. So I added the um, Superman metal, um, Superman um, guitar chords to the to the my the entrance song. That was an accident. The last thing was I need a freaking entrance. So now this is where things got a little difficult because now I started getting you know a lot of trial and error stuff. I'm like, okay, I kind of want to do something where I want to have like almost like a suit on and I'm able to take it off and underneath is the Superman thing. That's a little bit more elaborate and I'm still thinking about doing something like that down the line, but I have to find the perfect thing to do. Right. Um, but we'll get back to that. Um, then I started doing, um, I painted my chest for a little bit. So what I did is if you can go back in the archives, there's some pictures from my Chaotic Wrestling and WrestlePro where I would have um, a friend of mine who was, he's a really good painter, he lives in L.A. now, but he used to live up the block from me, and I would have him kind of airbrush or, or even paint the big M on my chest, so I would kind of have the chance of, I'd put a hoodie on or something like that, and I'd come out and I'd kind of do the Clark Kent ripoff, and you would see the, the, cha- the uh, painted chest. But at times, because he wasn't so, he wasn't available all the time, so right. if I didn't have him, I would kind of have my mom do it or my girlfriend do it. Right, it just right. wouldn't come out, it wouldn't come out perfect, you know? So that was like kind of a fail, you know, that ended up being kind of shitty. And then I had um, a really, I had a cape made. So what I was doing is I was debuting for Chaotic, and Chaotic's a big company, I'm sure. Have you guys ever made it down there yet? No, not yet. Or up there, rather. Well, it's out, it's out in Massachusetts, you guys would love it. Chaotic's awesome. I think it shows coming up Cold Fury next month. If, you, if you're going to come to any of them, come to that one. You'll I, like it. Well, actually, but, um, um, we have an interview with yeah. the guys from Chaotic soon, but go ahead, Mike, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, so there you go. There you go. So I, I, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pass across there one day. Oh, absolutely. But um, yeah, hell yeah. So when I was debuting there, I was like, okay, it's a big company. Let me let me try to do something a little bit over the top. You know, locally, you don't have to. When you're local, you don't have to kind of go over the top. You're over. You kind of just they just want to see you. You don't got to do all the crazy shit. I don't think, in fact, just to not to you know backtrack. I didn't think I've wore that chess piece in Brooklyn yet. <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll get there. We'll okay. get there. So when I debuted for Chaotic, I want something made. So. I reached out to my gear maker, and I said, hey, man, Mike, I'm not looking for anything over the top because I want it done by next week. Can you make me a quick cape with the M on it? So he, what he did is he made me it, – it's not – it's not. let's put it this way. I don't want to say anything bad about him because he's very good at what he does. But because of the rush idea aspect of it and the amount you know, of time we were able to put to it, it wasn't the best thing in the world. It was it essentially looked like a shower curtain and a kind of like a uh, – like a, a pleather and like it just didn't look so good. I didn't like the way it looked. So that really was short lived. That maybe I wore that maybe once or twice. Okay. Um, and then I sat there. I was like, okay, I need to invest in something that's really, really good. So Sammy, the Chris brothers, um, and Vinnie Marsiglia of the, of the, of the kingdom, um, they go through this guy, Rockwell mask mm-hmm. and they get all their masks done. So Vin, I, when you used to see Vinnie with the, um, with the Jason Voorhees mask and all this horror King stuff, yeah. he got that from Rockwell mask. So I sat there and I hit the guy up and I'm like, hey man, like I know you do a really good job in masks. I was like, have you ever done any kind of like chest plates or any kind of body armor type of thing? And he said, no. But he's like, I would love to try it on you. So I was his first guinea pig project on a on a, a something other than a mask. So I, I we sat to him, we came up with the design, and I when he got when I got it, I loved it. That's awesome. I thought man. it was just something so yeah. I think it's just a it has that like Spartacus. Superman look to it you know like I want it to almost be like like you're looking at a warrior type of Superman you're not looking at like you know it just brings a different element to the character is what I think I'm saying absolutely yeah it's kind of like a um, like an altered universe Superman that's like take no shit from nobody I don't I'm not wearing the bright colors I'm coming out um, you know wearing this chest plate boom Um, so I know at the over the top uh, show that we went to you know we you know you're you were very nice to us and actually to talk to uh, me and Joe for a little bit after the show uh, while everyone was leaving and stuff like that. And I remember we had talked about how we wanted the finish to go uh, for the rumble between you and Josh Briggs. Um, <laughs> now, after that after that match, uh, did anyone, like, say to you, like, you know, we wish that you two had finished out the match other than, you know, Kingpin and Wrecking Ball or was, like, like were, were people like? Do you think like people were kind of disappointed in that finish? Because I I know for a fact me and Joe were because because you and Josh were kicking the shit out of each other for like a good portion of that whole entire match. Um. So like, yeah. how how did you like? How did you feel about the finish to that? And like, do you wish it went different, or do you feel like this is how it should have went? Or like, how do you how how did you feel about that the rumble? Well, um, of course, obviously, you always want to win. Right. That's what we train for, right? We work our ass off to win. Uh, right. But um, 
so that that particular show was my debut at NEW. So when I got there, I knew I was having a match, um, and I knew I was in the rumble, but I didn't know to what extent. So like the wrestling world, I guess, is a small community where like everybody kind of knows everybody. So my intent was is that hey, like yeah, I'll debut here. Like they'll kind of use me as a good hand because you know the new the New England area is um, somewhat smart enough to me to the point where oh, if I if I enter the rumble, it's kind of like oh, this is a cool moment, but maybe but maybe it's just there to kind of enhance the match rather than go the distance. So when I got there and um, Mike kind of showed me the rundown, I was like, oh shit, like I'm two and I'm lasting an hour and I'm in the final three. So I was like, oh, that's awesome. Because what that means is, is that you have faith in me and you're giving me an opportunity to shine. And uh, I appreciate that more than anything. So right off the bat, I was like, this is going to be badass. And not only that, but they gave you a chance to really show off in that rumble. Mm-hmm. You know, there's certain people, certain, certain companies when you kind of get to, to a Royal Rumble type of match where it's just like, yeah, okay, go out there, punches and kick, toss your guy out, and then at, towards the end, you guys can figure something out. Right. This was written to make people stand down and people get over it. And, and I can't thank them enough because they made my debut there that much easier. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, for, for, you know, like for, for guys like you to, you know, invite me on a podcast uh, a month after debuting at a company means that you guys are impressed enough to be like, hey, this guy's pretty decent. And oh, that's all the backstage stuff, man. They gave me the ball to run with, so that's pretty awesome. Now, in regards to the finish, um, I know Wrecking Ball is super over there. Josh is up and coming and becoming super over there. Um, it, who's the, it was it? Final Four was Malonis in there with me. Uh, it was it, Malonis, me. It was you, Briggs, uh, Kingpin, and uh, Wrecking Ball. I think. The Kingpin, there you go. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that was the Final Four. So Brian Malonis, yeah. 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 So once we got Malonis out and we had the final three, yeah, the crowd started getting kind of crazy because they were like. We like Wrecking Ball. Josh Briggs is up and coming, and this new guy kind of impressed the shit out of us. Yo, so listen. there was some real good. There was some real good dynamics there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh so like man. With, with that, I, with that, I was rolling with it. Mm-hmm. Now, in hindsight, you know, me and Josh wrestled a lot. We were, I wrestled one of his first matches back in the early, uh, the uh, middle of 2017, and to see where he is now is freaking awesome. The guy's a genetic freak. He's going to be awesome. He's huge. He's a big man. He flies. He's the man. So we've wrestled a lot. Um, so I know what me and him can do. And uh, Wrecking Ball is what Wrecking Ball is. He's a Wrecking Ball. I wrestled him too one on one, so I kind of had the idea of like, oh, this is this is going to be something special here. Absolutely. Um, I think from a wrestling standpoint, you would have seen something much different with me and Josh in the last two rather than Wrecking Ball and Josh. Right. Um, but that being said, um, I'm not saying it's the wrong decision. Obviously, Wrecking Ball earned his spot and Josh earned his spot. So I wouldn't say I would have wanted it another way, but I think what you guys would have saw was something different. Yeah, and when it was the final two, right? And uh, so when when you were part of the final four, like we were, like the minute you came out, and you, you already knew our, where we were sitting in our section, man. We we wanted you yeah. to go over so bad. We wanted you to win that match. Um, so as far as any W goes, uh, is this going to be like a future thing? Like you are you part of the NEW family now, or like are you bound? Like because I, I know you wrestle for like other. Uh, organizations too, but are you, do you want to keep wrestling in NEW? Like, what, what's your future for that? I want. I I am part of the NEW family going forward, and I want to be here for sure. Uh, my goal, NEW. I even said it. I don't know if you follow the social media on them, but uh, they, when they aired the promo of uh, me backstage, uh, basically introducing myself, I, I said that NEW was one of the companies that I considered a goal, um, especially in the territories. We go back to the territories that we were talking about earlier. Um, I basically conquered most of the companies I want to work for in this area um, entirely. And I think NEW was just about the last of the Northeast that I really wanted to be a part of. And um, I finally got the call from Taven and, uh, and Mike, and I was, I was ecstatic to be a part of it. I want to make it a priority. I want to make it onto those big shows, the stadium shows, the high school shows that have 2,000 people. You know, if you're a wrestler and you don't want to be a part of a show like that, then you're, you're in this business for the wrong reason. So right. NEW – is exactly where I want to be. It's, it's one, to me, it's one of the top companies in, in the entire United States by far. Uh, when it comes to production, when it comes to draws, when it comes to name value, when it comes to everything. I mean, they, they got it. They, what they've been doing there for the last couple of years, for the last plenty of years, since freaking, you know, Dusty Rhodes was around, from what I understand, um, they've been killing it. And I'm very happy to be a part of it, and I will be a part of it. No doubt about it. So I got to ask you, who are the, like, your favorite guys to work with? Um, 
on the indie on the indies an independent level or like a like a um in general, the guys, the guys that you've worked with in the past that you just absolutely enjoy, and you guys just go out there and just tear the house down. Uh, JT Dunn, a hundred percent. Every single time we wrestle, we have a phenomenal match. He's one of those guys that um, is incredibly giving and understands how to play to a crowd and storytell at the same time. So, you know, a lot of indie guys now, it's kind of about no selling stuff and just getting stuff in and just kind of doing stuff. Without forgetting, while forgetting the elements of what wrestling is, and that's really storytelling through fighting, mm-hmm. um, in layman terms. <laughs> and a lot of people do forget about that because they kind of just want to get their shit in, um, you know. And, and it's not from a selfish standpoint; it's just of how the business is now. Like a lot of companies, a lot of times the fans in, in, in the audience they they want that fast paced kind of strong style kill each other thing. And um, luckily with me and JT, we we don't always have to do that. We, we get busy, don't get me wrong, but we also tell really good storytelling. So he's one of them. Um, I've wrestled on JF over 100 times now, so he, me and him have great chemistry. We always kind of do, uh, we always kind of have a great match together. Um, one of my favorite matches ever was Hanson, who I'm so happy he's in NXT right now. He's so deserving. Mm-hmm. Um, Hanson and I wrestled last February 2017, and, and in New York at least, it, go, it was um, it's in the, the final four for match of the year. 2017 in the New York uh, scene. Wow, awesome. Um, he gave, yeah, he, I can't can't put over that match more enough because when you when you wrestle main guys or you wrestle guys that are international or off TV or going to TV, there's two ways of doing it. It's either they pass the knowledge and give you 100% or they kind of give you a really good match while keeping it simple. Let's put it that way. Hanson basically went in there in a selfless manner, gave me everything I wanted to do, gave me ideas to make my shit better, um, beat him cleanly without any kind of issue, without any kind of issue, um, without any kind of issue, and then just kind of taught and guided you through the, through the entire match. So him personally, is just he was one of my favorite people to work, and I'm happy at Chaotic, I was part of his last match before he went to NXT, so I'm happy with that too. Uh, Hanson's a great guy. Like I said, Briggs, I wish me and him had a little bit more one-on-one matches because we had a lot of monkey man matches, but me and him, me and him one-on-one, I think we'll be able to really... Really go the distance with that. Um, damn, whenever whenever people ask me questions like this, I get such a mental block because you wrestle so you wrestle so many people and you have so many good matches with people that you kind of tend to forget. Um, but then there's a shitload, man. There's a shitload. So, yeah, those three, just just so uh, those three names, I'm sure you're familiar with. So those are those are definitely three guys that I, I enjoy wrestling on a daily basis. Awesome. So also, who was the the who was your favorite wrestler as a kid? Like who's the guy that made you go? I, that's 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 what I want to do for a living. That's the that's what I want to be. I want to be a wrestler. I, like you said, they're like comic book heroes, like real life. You guys are essentially real life comic book heroes. Guys, that you yeah. can go there and see that there are chiseled bodies and also like tell a story. Who's the guy or or guys or or even female wrestler that like made you yeah. go? I got to go out and do this. Well, it's going to sound cliche. If you if you see stuff on social media, I, I do some acting now, too. So I put the hashtag, usually when I do an acting gig and I'm on set, um, I put the hashtag Dwayne, uh, because I live that rock lifestyle. That's my goal. So it may sound cliche, but as a kid, man, the rock was my guy. I was born in 1991, so I was an Attitude Era guy. Um, you know, late, two, late 90s into the early 2000s. That, that was my prime time of wrestling. Um, you know, so I, I was the rock, it was Austin, it was triple H, it was DX, it was guys like that. Like those were, those were, that was my time period. So, you know, there was the Austin clan and there was the rock clan. I was always team rock. Um, but the more and more I got older and I looked at wrestling more of less of a, of a innocent fan, let's put it that way to more of a smartened up fan. I, I saw, I fell in love with Monster Man, Randy Savage and Kurt Angle. So those three right there, Kurt Angle, 2006 wrestling machine, Kurt Angle. I'll use that more clear. Um, so those three right there basically have been my my inspiration for what why I wanted to be a wrestler. Um, the Rock as a whole for what he's done career wise. If no one wants, to, if, if you don't want to have the success the Rock has had universally, then uh, you're, you're smoking some some good shit right there because that guy has uh, changed the game. So you know, from a professional standpoint, I, the Rock's my number one goal with that. And then just from a wrestler, uh, from an in ring standpoint, you got you know Macho Man Randy Savage and Kurt Angle, man, like Kurt Angle's size. And a build is a big reason why I've always gravitated towards him, even though I don't have the Olympic background and the amateur background. His power with his limited size was always something that I was intrigued in. 
Um, and Macho Man, I mean, come on, over the top shit like that. That that is wrestling. That is wrestling. It is, yeah. No, I, Macho Man's in my top five, and and Angle, I, I gained a new respect for him because we we actually saw him wrestle Cody in uh, at WrestleFest last year. And, oh, he went in. Yeah, and he, he went, went in. It, it was good, man. It was really good. Uh, it was his last match, obviously, before he went back to WWE. It was just yeah, unbelievable. And and same thing with Cody. Like just to see them, those guys live, and how much you don't see on TV, which which is why we love going to these local shows and seeing you guys. You get to showcase, like you said, your talent, and we actually get to appreciate yeah. it. <clears throat> And the, and the beauty of it is, is what I like to tell a lot of people when they, when people who aren't um, totally smart up to professional wrestling as a whole, um, when they find out when I'm, when I, when they ask what I, when, when they find out I'm a wrestler or ask what I do for a living and then find out I'm a wrestler, they pretty much say, oh, that's like WWE. And what I like to say is it's kind of like minor league ball to get to WWE because mm-hmm. there's only one game in town and that's Vince. Everything else is, is number two, which is okay. But Vince is obviously everyone's main goal. Like even guys in ROH that, that, you know, live out their contract, they'll go to WWE. Or Impact guys that live out their contract, they'll go to WWE. So, you know, obviously WWE is the end goal. So that being the only game in town, I feel like everything underneath that is a step to get there. So I consider like minor league baseball. So we may be single A right now on the independent level or double A on the independent level, but we are the future of the major leagues. So when you guys come to shows like that, it's going to be funny because hopefully in a perfect world, five or ten years from now when we're in the prime of out hopefully WWE careers, you can sit there and say, hey, man, five years ago, this guy was on the phone with me, and we were talking, we were just shooting shit. Yeah, and that's the key. Like, that's the best thing about the independent thing. And you guys, in fans in general, coming to these shows, because they're watching the stars of tomorrow literally do their thing before before they hit the main, mainstream. And that's why we love the indie scene. But you want to know where, where I want to see Man of Steel? Do you want to know where yeah, I think Man of Steel should go? I think Man of Steel should go to Japan and run the Bullet Club. Oh, I would man, run and run through. We'll fl- good buddy, I'm good buddies with Flip. So if he needs some, uh, if he needs some backup, by all means, all you got to do is give me a call. Hey, man, that's why I, I want. Actually, I, I do. I I was like, I was thinking, like, you know what, Man of Steel would be awesome if he was in Bullet Club. Like, legit. Like, if they ever call you, you should you know definitely hop on that. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll definitely, I'll definitely think about it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say earlier. You were talking about how like the indie scenes, it's actually gaining such popularity right now. I put that. I, I don't, I, obviously, a lot of people like to say it's the Bullet Club and and all that. I I genuinely think it's guys like a Colt Cabana, a guy like, uh, uh, oh God, man, I'm drawing blanks here. But I can see their faces. Just can't say their names. But uh, just guys like that 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 aren't these big, big, massive names. They're doing the real work. I think the guys like Bullet Club because they've gotten themselves into like hot topic and stuff but like joey ryan to me is a bigger name in my eyes because that guy isn't doing what they're doing and he's still getting into the same places that they are just penis plexing everybody yes you know (laughs) oh yeah yeah no guy like joey man he's a a journeyman and cold too like they've been around for such a long time and they just and these are guys that have three stints in wwe or no or no stints in wwe at all and like they're making li- they're making a living, you know, on the independence, like a good living. Like that's that's a great thing. And you're right, they are putting in the groundwork. They are they're they're you know, paving the way for guys like us and the Bullet Club and stuff like that. I'm I'm almost not even considering the Bullet Club an independent independent company anymore. I mean an independent um, wrestling or independent faction anymore. Yeah, same here. They're yeah. their own brand. Right. They're their own brand. They're the so uh, NWO independent- of today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're their own brand. So whatever independent they work for, like it doesn't matter that that independent's working for them. So they've done something that is totally unprecedented in wrestling, and it's only helped wrestling as a whole. So too sweet, thank you for that. There's no doubt about that. But the, like you said, it's Joey Ryan and Nicole Cabana who are making independent wrestling uh, the way it needs to be right now because you know they're they're the guys that you know aren't aren't in TV, aren't on TV. They're the guys that are like under the radar or would never really appreciate it in that light. And what they're doing is they're making independent wrestling cool. And they're helping guys like myself and, and, and all the other younger guys, you know, flourish because of the, the road that they paved. So hell yeah, that's like that's the key. And they need to, and there's plenty more guys like that too, which is good. And they need to stay around, man, because they're only good for the business. They're only good for the business that way. Absolutely. Um so Mike, I have to know. Let's uh play scenario game real quick. You get si- let's say yeah. you, you get signed to WWE, uh you make it to let's say Monday night raw, you're on the raw roster. Who is your Dream match opponent. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give you the first one, um, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you the backstory behind it. Okay. Um, 
a lot of people call me the Cena of the Indies or the Hogan of the Indies. Yeah. Reason why is because I'm I'm one of the only pure baby faces that I guess can get over with that same um, character. Yep. Um, out there right now. So in other words, in in a very in a very angry and sparky uh, fan base of the world is right now. Um, I can still go out there slapping fives and smiling, and um, thankfully, you know that works and that gets gets over. Um, and a lot of other people, you know, have not to discredit them, have a harder time doing that as a babyface. So I do call my, I do get that nickname, um, the Cena of the Indies or Hogan of the Indies, because of that right there. So I would say wrestling at John Cena would obviously be, would obviously be a dream goal because if you don't want to wrestle the top guy in the company, I don't care what his in ring stuff is, I don't right. care how good or bad he is. Right. If you don't want to wrestle the top guy in the company, then you, your goals are a little bit, you know, backwards. Now, from a, from an in ring standpoint, um, I think it would have to be AJ Styles. I know he's SmackDown, but I think it would still have to be an AJ Styles because that'd um, be awesome. Once again, I go back to the size aspect of it. Um, luckily, now wrestling isn't about the land of the giants anymore. And that being said, if you are a giant, good for you because you're going to stand out even more. Right. But because it's not the land of the giants anymore, guys are very you know equal in size and and or, or stature and whatnot. But I'm still a big advocate of like. Hey man, like I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a five ten six foot with my boots on, um, broad muscle guy. So I want to still stay true to that. And I feel like AJ Styles because of his size and my size, I feel like that's a match that my strength uh, matching up with his high flying and his strikes. You might see something really solid out of that. You might see something real solid out of that. Yeah, that'd be a a you know phenomenal match. <laughs> um, so did you happen to catch the uh, Royal Rumble at all this year? I did. So I was on the road. Me and uh, Rex and I were at Shikara. We had a Shikara show that night, and we had to do some promos afterwards. So, um, kids, don't try us at home, but we were watching it while driving home. Um, so we didn't see <laughs> all of it. I, I, I saw we got to the car, and the, the men's Royal Rumble was halfway through. Um, I did watch all the women's Royal Rumble, which I thought was awesome, to be yeah. honest with you. I thought, I thought the girls' Rumble was awesome. Uh, I think it overshadowed. I think it shined the men's, uh, over the men's Rumble this, uh, this year. Um, so that's really cool for the girls. That's really cool for WWE, really getting that done. Um, but I did, I did watch it enough to, to to talk about it. Let's go that way. I I, I respectfully disagree on that. <laughs> I just thought, really, do you? Yeah, I thought the women did a great job. I just thought Michelle McCool knocking out, taking out six women in that. Oh yeah, meant like just because I, you're the well, Undertaker's here, wife. I'll my, I don't. I'll give you my point on that. I do agree with you. Here's why I like the Royal Rumble, the Women's Royal Rumble, better. When I think of the Royal Rumble, I think of nostalgia, I think of surprise, uh, mm-hmm. surprise entrances, and I think of moments. The women's, I don't care about the in-ring stuff when it comes to the Royal Rumble. It's all okay. punches and kicks. I want the moments, the surprises, and the shocks, all that stuff. Right. I got more of that with the women. I didn't care about who eliminated who. I didn't care about how sloppy they looked, because a lot of them looked sloppy. Yeah. They were coming in, they were missing kicks, and they weren't selling. It was very Sasha Banks. To watch. That meme that's out yeah. there. The whole paper. Oh my god, big... it in the corner. Yeah, the, exactly. the whole paper. But they had they had more fest. surprises. They had more moments where you can go, Oh, there you go, that's cool. Yeah. So that to me is what a Royal Rumble needs to be, and that's why I like the girls a little bit better. Yep. But yep. the men's obviously had just the, the they, they were they were more clean, they were more polished. Yeah, and I just think that the only thing I will say is they got it right this year. Like when it came to who should have won, they got it right. Really? Interesting interesting thing. See, it, it, the more and more busy my schedule has been actually wrestling, the less and less I've been in tune with, like, the dirt sheets and all that stuff about all oh, the rumors and all that. So I actually had no idea who was the rumored favor, uh, favorite to win the Royal Rumble this year for the guys. I had no idea. Last was, year we knew. We, we, it was, you know, the years prior, yeah. you knew going into it. It was predictable. This year, it might have been predictable from a storyline standpoint. Um, but I had no idea. I didn't know who the rumored winner, winner was. I found that prior that it was either Roman or uh, or Nakamura. I ended up going with Nakamura anyway, which is which is cool. It was different. But I, I was a little shocked that with him. You know, it's, it, it's an interesting, and it goes back to what I mentioned about Italy with me with WWE. It shows you their their demographic um, approach and their, their campaign in regards to you know hitting demographics and, and trying really to master that global thing. They know their markets. They know what markets they have to reach. They know what's good. And, and that's not to take anything away from Oscar or Nakamura. They're obviously you know, two of the greatest in the world at what they do. There's no way to do that. But it is interesting to see how they put those things together. You know, to, 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 in other words, I guess a Nakamura headlining uh, uh, WrestleMania uh, wouldn't necessarily be a traditional Vince move, I think. You know, Vince no, goes over reliable. Yeah. 
John Cena, Roman, and stuff like that. So it was very cool to see something different and something fresh, especially the fact that we're getting AJ Nakamura too. Oh man! And on this on this standpoint, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So like, I'm, I'm happy to see that Vince uh, signed off on a wrestling match. Let's right. put it that way. Yeah, that's what I'm I happy mean. That he yeah, said, he... this is going to sell on a wrestling match. Yeah, Nothing no, I... more than the wrestling match. Yeah, no, I think this time at least they did like like you said, like Roman's usually like it, everybody thought Roman was going to win it this year because that's the the original idea that they were gonna they were gonna go to you know Roman Brock again at WrestleMania. I I, I was like I really hope that doesn't happen yeah. just because I like, I don't yeah, mind. Just that's that's just sick to think about that again. It's just sick to think about that again. Yeah, no, I don't I don't want it, but like to see, and that was the <laughs> other thing is to like. 10, 15 years ago, you had literally the Asian wrestlers. They were a horrible gimmick. They were chopping off Val Venus's dick. Now you're yeah. <laughs> you, now they're the going to probably main event WrestleMania. Hundred percent, and that and that's exactly what I, exactly what I meant about that demographic thing. Like you know, the evolution of wrestling as a whole has changed, which is great because New Japan, what New Japan is today. In fact, if you really think about it, New Japan is the number two to WWE. Absolutely, oh, it is hundred yeah. percent. It's, it's the it's 100%. the number two. It's the number two, and to tell you the truth, if you really want to crunch the numbers, it's maybe it's maybe a close one in regards to popularity. Oh yeah, if, oh, you, if, yeah. You're, if you're taking away the numbers and the dollars and all that shit, it's probably close. It's probably t- neck and neck with popularity with WWE. So, you know, it's great to see what Japan and Japanese wrestlers are able to do now in current day. But you're absolutely right. Back in the day with Kai and Tai and even Tajiri for, for the most part. Like, these are great wrestlers. Minaki, Takamishinoku, Tajiri. These are, these are Japanese legends. And then they come to WWE and they kind of don't really get the rub or the push that they were supposed to at the time. And now, fast, fast forward, you know, uh, 10 years later, 10 years later, you have back of more headlining WrestleMania and as- and Oscar doing the same thing for the, yeah. for the ladies. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's something different. And that's the key thing with wrestling guys, not to be off top of it. Wrestling is wrestling just needs to be fresh. If you make it fresh and then you go back to the greatest hits when it needs it, you're fine. If you keep trying to shove things down their throat, it, it's only set up to make wrestling fail. That's it. It's not like boxing where you can get Foreman and Ali, you know, boxing and then they do it again down the road because they had a great fight the first time, you know? Yeah. No, I totally understand that. That that's what I, the only reason why I disagreed was I just didn't like some of the the women's wrestlers. But uh, like you said, they they did they had more veterans come back and more surprises. Like the men's obviously left it very like just kind of lackluster. Very, very yeah. yeah, very light. Like well, I was happy was to thing. see I was happy to see Ray, but that was the biggest name that you got and the only name you got other than the Hurricane, and he was in and out okay, so quick. Yeah. Gregory Helms didn't yeah, look exactly. good either. Gregory Helms did not look good. I'm saying like, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like, <laughs> like body wise. I, I was on a show with him in July. He, he does look great. I promise you that. Okay, because I, I kind of saw it, maybe I don't know, man. Maybe it was just like this, this is gear. Like this is gear. It had to be the gear. I think it, I think it was his gear. I think it was his gear. I think it was his gear on the TV stand. Uh, you know. Uh, Spotlight, like when you kind of see guys like that when they come back with their with their gear on, and, and it wasn't WWE gear; it was like your older gear. It wasn't the flash you do stuff like yeah. that was shining and matched up with the lights and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. It was great talking to you, Mike. I, you know, we I, we don't want to hold you up all day. Uh, we appreciate you coming on and having a great conversation with us, and wish you all the best. Wow, thanks for having me. Welcome to the WECP family, bro. Yeah, man, it's awesome oh, to have. Oh yeah, man, I'm, I, no problem, guys. I want to be back. That's for sure. The more and more you guys see me at NEW, I, I, I think we can get more in depth next time. You know, and yeah. we'll really, we'll really roll with the punches. But for the people listening, man, um, I owe these guys a promo. Uh, I slack big time to promote this thing, so I promise you, next time we're going to be on here for as long as they want. They'll throw some crazy questions at me, some word association, whatever the hell you want to do. Absolutely. Uh, but just definitely follow these guys, man. WECP. Uh, BSN Network, the heels of podcasting here. Do it, man. It's, it's good. I had a good time. You guys are good stuff. Thank you very much, man. That's this wrestling, you fuck face! <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, just want to say again, thank you very much to Mike for coming on, talking to us, you know, elaborating and, and just giving us a little bit of insight into who he is. Um, we're going to talk, we're going to elaborate a little bit more about the Royal rumble and how we felt about it. Jerry and I disagree on this. Um, and we also want to like talk about like the, the, the coming out of it. What is it? What does this mean for coming out of the Royal rumble? So Jerry, what did you, what did you think of the Royal rumble in uh, general? The whole, <clears throat> the whole pay-per-view as a whole, uh, the women's rumble match, 
was the only good, semi-good part of the night. The rest of it, to me, um, and many people have disagreed with me, whatever, but again, you know, everyone has their own opinion. I didn't enjoy it. I remember it was, you know, we were just sitting, we're sitting at my, uh, you know, my fiance's house watching it, and it was just a huge botch fest all night. No moves were landing. People were tripping over each other. It was just, everyone was sloppy. Um, I just, I didn't enjoy it, and that's all I could really say about it. I just, I just did not enjoy it. Now I know your, your view is a little different, so I'd, I'd love to hear what, you know, what you thought. Well, about it. so this is the same paper and I, this is bet what four weeks ago yeah. this happened. So it's a little bit fuzzy in my head when it comes to like the other matches that happened on the show. So the tag titles happened as well, right? It was, um, mm. the Usos versus that match was good. That, that was a good match. See, I disagree. Not because they didn't wrestle well. And Dave and I have had this discussion about it as well. I don't think it's so much that the wrestling was, it's not the wrestling that I bought that bothered me or that the fact that they, they, you know, obviously did too quick. Like they did the long thing. They should have just done. It just should have just been one pinfall and it would have been oh, fine. Like the two out of the three, two yeah, out of yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. I got why they did it because you yeah. always expect them to get that second one. And then right. it has to go to a third and that always plays out. I get it. They wanted that like little bit of mystery. Oh wow! Quick, they got it. The second one really quick, and it's over. Now it's over. But it just seemed so uneventful. Yeah. They should have done. If you're gonna do that, do it at a different date. Right. You know what I mean? I just think that the way they set it up, the way they did it, just didn't work for me. Um, I liked the pay per view enough. Uh, I just thought that <sighs> the women's re- like. I, I understand, and like when we were talking to Mike, he was like, yeah, but you got all the... Di- that is the disappointment with the men's. We didn't get really any throwbacks other than Ray. Like, I don't consider Hurricane because he only was in there for like two seconds, got thrown out, <clears throat> and then he did a couple poses and ran out of there. So the men's only had two, right? Yeah, that was it. Just two? Yeah, and that's no, what bothered no, me. Yeah, I was... And the women's, to be fair, the women's, they've never done a women's Royal Rumble, so you everyone that's not wrestling right now... Right is a surprise. Yeah. And like some of their other surprise women that I'm sure they probably would have loved to have used are either pregnant or just had their kids like a week after the show. So <laughs> right, it's like right. they can't use those women. But like Lita didn't look great because she was wearing an outfit to I guess promote like um not letting, you know, men mistreat women or something like that. It was some there was some sort of like political statement she was trying to wear with her gear. Um and I didn't like she didn't look great like in her uh in her wrestling she looked very sloppy she hasn't wrestled in a long time uh, uh, uh what was her name uh Sasha you know fucking Jamie's girl she barely touching her in the corner not even ki- not even yeah, touching her no kicks looks landing. like she's like trying to kick a fucking ghost there's nothing <laughs> in front of her yeah, yeah. and Michelle McCool I know I know I get hung up on that and like Dave just it blows his mind that it's all I ever fucking talk about it with it but it bothered me that she eliminated like six people I don't care that you're fucking the ult- you're fucking the Undertaker. I don't care. You weren't a good wrestler when you wrestled. You're not a good wrestler now, and you're not that hot. I don't really care. Like she didn't do anything for me. Her eliminating other women made no sense. Uh-huh. I'm like, I don't care. You you're like this generation's like uh, I don't even know Emma. Like just you're nothing to me. Holy you're shit. nothing you're that bad. And I think Emma was had a great look. Yeah. I thought Emma had a great look. I think Michelle McCool sucks. <laughs> nothing. She does nothing for me. That being said, yeah, okay, Trish came back. But she came back at like 30. Yeah. So she barely had to wrestle. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the men's, I felt like you got some good points. The the Heath Slater, I thought that was good. Like, you always get a comedy spot. It's usually uh, Kofi, but it wasn't this time. It was... It was him, and it, and it worked well. He kept getting beaten up. Like It was an ongoing thing for 15, 20 minutes of that match. Yeah. Every time somebody came out, they would destroy him. He right. never got into the ring, and then finally when he got into the ring, he ended up eliminating somebody important and then got eliminated himself. Like it, it, it was a better To me, it was a little bit better story. And then obviously getting the fucking finish we wanted, like everybody sitting there going, oh, God, it's going to happen again. It's going to fucking happen again. And then... You know, we get Nakamura, man. Like, that's insane. That was a huge 
Like, so I, I popped for that. Yeah, and yeah. and and Oscar winning was great oh. too. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to downplay that at all. But like, I genuinely saw once that happened, I was like, okay, I know how this is playing out. Yeah. So the men's when 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 Nakamura, won, I was like, do they even do they do they just go? Well, we're gonna throw him against Brock and see what happens. Like, I in my head, I'm like, I feel like they're gonna have to do AJ, but like, does WWE? Say no, we swerved them. Now we're gonna swerve them again. We're yeah. gonna go the other way again so too. Happy they didn't do that, man. <laughs> so because I, I Brock... also I, I didn't like the fact that they like let Oscar ch- or they let they let Oscar choose who she was gonna face, and then they didn't let Nakamura choose. It was just oh, you're wrestling AJ. Like you know what I mean? Like he chose. He chose. Oh, then it was no, him. What, what happened was okay. Shinsuke chose. Okay. Asuka, Asuka did. she was going to, and then Ronda's music Ronda hit. comes out. That's what I'm saying. Like that was the part that I didn't like. Like you didn't give her the opportunity to at least say who she was going to wrestle. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, yeah, we're we're teasing it. We're teasing it. There's a possibility she could go after Ronda. She could go after Alexa. She could go after Charlotte, but she doesn't. And then they <laughs> barely mention her on Raw. And then the next week on Raw, they don't. The week after that, the past two weeks, they haven't mentioned her at all. Yeah. So all that shit, all that stuff you steamrolled out of the Royal Rumble with, that big buildup, and you're going to have Ronda. I get it. You're worried that Ronda um, might not be 100% good enough to be on TV yet, when you know, whatever. And I understand that working with her and getting her, her stick down before she gets on TV. And, and you don't want her to be embarrassed, and you don't want to embarrass yourselves. Right. But at the same time, you need to put her out there. And... I don't know, like, that bothers me. Like, she's she can talk. Yeah. Like, it's not like she didn't, like, talk enough shit when she fought. Like, right. it's not yeah. like she doesn't know how to talk shit. I just, it, that's the only thing that, like, like threw me for a loop out of the whole thing was, like, come on, man. Well, and I'm, I remember our episode how we were like, listen, she's coming out in the Rumble. She's going to win the I Rumble. I knew she wasn't going to be in the we, Rumble. But see, I, I had that thing where it's like, okay, the final two in my mind was going to be Asuka and Ronda Rousey. And I mm. wanted Asuka to throw her over kind of kill the steam that, okay, Ronda Rousey's in the WWE now. Cool. Like, yeah, but me personally, I don't care, but it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And it's great. You and know, I, it's great for the company, whatever, whatever. Um, but Oscar winning, you yeah. know, I've been, I'm happy she won because very deserving of both, you know, Shinsuke. Yeah, no, no, know, no. Um, but two her, her, Asian winners, like that's yeah. insane. Well, it's like what Mike was saying. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Like, like, like what I brought up. Like they, they used to have them doing like the the most ob, like just awkward gimmicks. They're parody jobbers. Yeah. yeah. Or or they're the most offensively Asian thing you've ever seen. Like the only guy that like I feel like got over before Shinsuke is like Mister Fuji. And that's only because he was a he was a manager. He wasn't even a wrestler. When he wrestled, yeah. when he wrestled, he wasn't done well. Well, Tajiri was he was good, but once again, did how high did he get? I mean, not, on the card, uh, really. he was a mid level guy at best. Yeah, in the WWE, I'm not saying on in ECW he wasn't a high level guy, and he shouldn't have been. He should have been treated like that. He's and he still wrestles. That's the other part. He's still that good. Yeah, he was in 205, uh, the 205 mm-hmm. um, tournament. So he's still that good. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, he's like. I don't know if it's 100% Vince just finally conceding and going, well, you know, look what, you know, look what Jericho did. Look what, you know, New Japan's doing. We have to promote our Asian wrestlers. It helps. It definitely helps. But they already had. I thought they did Brock um, Shinsuke in Japan. Uh, In Japan. At like a house show or something. Brock wrestled Kofi. I thought he wrestled Shinsuke. Maybe he did. I I, I thought he the did. Only, the only match I remember him in Japan is wrestling Kofi Kingston. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, and it, that makes that total sense. was a huge... Yeah, no, it's, it's the greatest match ever. It was like the second Kofi walked in, yeah. you know, doing his stupid skip clap yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. you know, yeah. the minute he turns around, Brock Destroyed, Brad, su- yeah. he literally suplexes Kofi for 10 whole minutes, dude. Back and forth, hey, corner to corner. That sums up Brock Lesnar's career. Yeah, hot garbage. Yeah, corner, corner, and then sorry, Joe, hit him with an F five. I hate Brock Lesnar. And uh, no, no, he's a Randy Orton guy. No, you get it. I hate him too. You want to get on this? You want to get on this right quick, right quick? Like he he was in the Royal Rumble, right? 
Randy? Yeah. yeah Rick, he Rick, appeared in it. Hold Randy on, Sanjo. Hold on. He was in the Royal Rumble. There you don't go. I just didn't think he was that. Like, they don't know what to do with him anymore. Like you said, he can go either way, but he they're not doing anything with him. Randy right now is jobbing himself. He's hes creating his own thing. He's pushing people over the way he wants to do it. Yeah. Um, at this point in time, he is trying to fight for his own title. But he's content at just helping Nakamura, helping AJ, helping anybody else. That's yeah. what he's, he's... He's won the title, the WWE title... Ten times already? Yeah. No, I, I, mean, I, I give him credit yeah. for that. I just think that his character to me is it's kind of like it's like a like a Bray Wyatt. They just don't know what to do with him anymore. Oh, dude, well, they gave him creative control. I mean, they pretty much did what they did with The Undertaker because he's almost out. Randy's almost out as well. He's having um, a, lot of, a lot of head trauma himself now. Oh, does he? Yeah, he's, he's got a couple things going on. So, Randy, you know, he just they're letting him just do what he wants, which is fine. I, I mean... Like I said, I just love. I just want to go back to 2006 and start punting people in the head. That was fun for me. So. Yeah, I just I think he could be utilized very well, and they just don't know how to do it. I, I mean, well, it's, it's also uh, the roster is starting to get stale. I mean, you don't want to see the same same matches over yeah. and over well, and over again. Right so. His matches with Shinsuke weren't that great. Like they should have been well, better. They weren't. Horrible. I will say this: the past two weeks, Randy's been coming out in RKO and everybody in sight. He just RKO Bobby Roode like the yeah, hell. No, but that, that's that's cool and shit. And but that, it, that's, that's his creative. That's his, that, that's that's his, his thing. Yeah. But like, it's RKO out of nowhere. Yeah. Which is, you know, but it's just like that's all he has. And if he and if he doesn't do that, which he always does, don't get me right. wrong, we still get that. We get that big pop every night. It's just he doesn't do anything else. To me, yeah, like I, I get it, and he's and he's gonna face Bobby Roode. I hope they have a good match. Like that could be a good match. I personally think that match is gonna go over well. I, I'm Let's asleep. hope. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't hope it's for the title because I like Bobby Roode as the champion right yeah, now. I think yeah. Bobby Roode should hold or just, on to it for if a while. You, yeah, if Randy, if he, if it is for the title, let him win. Right, but like I said, over, overall, I mean, that's Randy. It's it's Randy. Let's let him go. Like he's almost out, just like John Cena. Yeah. One foot out the door. Can we talk about this for a second? The Go ahead. the elimination chamber. I'm not. I'm know, not happy about of, it. None at of it all. does anything for me. I don't care that, that there's a women's one. No, well, see that that doesn't matter either. Uh, yeah. To me. Well, no. That, well, it's a women's that'll be my solution. So I'm no, I get it. They got it. Up, yeah, but oh no, we we just like we like to just. Oh, finish. yeah. No. Um, I just don't care about John Cena being in it at all. I just don't care. So Joe, so we can could Joe be the face of WECP and we'll and not we'll, we we have to stay the heels because. You know, we, I mean, he can, yeah. yeah. So you're like the good guy, and we're the bad guy. You know, he just you you buy into to WWE superstars a little bit more than I do. I, well, thanks to him, I've been an indie guy. So I mean, I've been working on it. But, yeah, uh, he's, know, he's, he's, he's starting. Trust me, he's I, he's starting to see. For as much as I shit on a lot of things, I think Cena's d- doesn't deserve three quarters of the shit that the people throw on him. Because I don't think he does anything wrong. I don't like and that. And it's not him I don't like that, that makes a lot of these decisions. In the elimination chamber yet again. And who did he who did he face to qualify for that match? Finn Balor. He took off Finn Balor. Which, which are idiots. Which to that's person, that's on that's uh, that's on Vince McMahon not understanding that you have a fucking lack of a better word, a golden ticket in Finn Balor and you've done nothing but destroy it. Yeah. You've done nothing but to fucking take all the shine off. Of Bray's it. not in it. Well, Bray, once Bray again, Bray lost they against don't Roman, so. because they don't care anymore about Bray. Bray fucked up when he started fucking JoJo. Let's be honest. <laughs> when he started fucking her, that still, screwed up. Yo, he's still on this. Yo, because of I'm not saying that. that he got. In, all right, he got in trouble for that. Not even in trouble. He got in trouble publicly, like with the fans yeah, right, for right, his yeah. cheating on his wife, and then he gets sick. Meningitis. At the same time, she got meningitis. He got meningitis, and like so Roman did. She must like have, there's a she bunch must of have people. Roman Reigns too, because that's what I'm saying. Like, it. but it went all around. The, it went all around the the locker room. It wasn't, and that's the thing. Like, I don't want to put that out there, but maybe. Like we saw the fucking, we saw the goddamn page tape. Man, it can I, happen in the oh, fucking locker room with your favorite guy. Uh, Xavier fuck him. <laughs> that, that's another thing that pisses me off. Don't get me started on that. How it's only on the women. That do that shit. Of course. When fucking Xavier Woods, like, six months later was married. Like, yeah. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Don't want to hear that. Well, maybe you should talk, call Vince and... Uh... Yeah, no. 
He doesn't want to hear what I have to say anyway. Uh, I personally think the Elimination Chamber is about to be trash. I'm not even going to try to. Yeah, no, it's not an exciting. Any of these pay-per-views leading up to the WrestleMania don't do anything for you. I love the Chamber. Well, because there's Chamber Fastlane than Mania, right? Yeah. No, Chamber Chamber Fastlane. Is Great Balls of Fire in there? Nah, probably not. That's gone? That's like towards summer. Yeah. Um, That's probably in between SummerSlam. So, you know, uh, so this is a Raw-based pay-per-view. Yep. Um... The women. Do we know the women that are in the chamber? Or yes, are you, they. Or you just Kurt don't Angle, Kurt name them all. Um, Ruby Riot's one of them, right? Ruby Riot. Is she the one that looks like a? Her, her nose is like kind of curved out, points straight to the ground like Squidward. Kinda. Yeah. She's 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 the. Is her she, half her head shaved? No. Bailey's in it. No, you're talking about you're talking about um, Sonya Deville. Mm. She wear like the MMA stuff. I'm talking about yeah. So who is the other one with the black lipstick? That's that's Ruby Riot. Okay. Sonya Deville is the one that you're talking about. She's the, she's the first openly gay woman in WWE history. Oh, she's gay. I yes. never I would yes. never knew that. Yes. Yeah, Matt, Matt. It's all over like whatever. Is it really when you go when you look her up, like that's one of the first things that pops up about her. Huh. Yeah, it's it's Bailey, Sasha Banks, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, and Mickey James. That's the women's elimination chamber. Fucking kidding me! That's like, it. Once again, That's nobody it. cares. Nobody cares. Like, well, who else would you rather have? Uh, I want Dave Dawson in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, like you know who I? Yeah. It's tough because that's what yeah, I mean. I like, I think Raw's, I think Raw's roster of women isn't as exciting when you put them in that type of a match. The, yes, is Oscar versus Alexa an exciting match? Yes. Oh yeah. Is Oscar versus well? You know, maybe like, uh, well, she already fought Sasha and lost, so that doesn't matter anymore either. But like her versus Bailey, she's already beaten Bailey, so like she's already run the gambit of all these wrestlers. So the only match that makes sense for her is obviously Oscar Alexa Bliss. But I, I just, I don't know. It doesn't. What does the winner get at Elimination Chamber? Is it just winning match, or is there any WrestleMania? Well, I was gonna say the, winner... the men's. It's it's you get the title shot. The women's, I don't know if that's mm. going to end up being a three. No, the men's is a not for the main title. It's just it's just for it's securing a spot at WrestleMania. That's what the Elimination Chamber is. Oh, that's even right? worse. Oh, see, I thought that made it. You win the no, Rumble. I thought when I you, know, when you no, win this, the Royal Rumble. Yes, you you are. Yeah, but I thought this was the implication was because they because of Raw winner didn't come out of the Royal Rumble. Right, they have to. Oh, this that's one right. pushes okay. this one pushes them to. So let's say Braun Strowman wins this one. He's going to WrestleMania versus Brock, which and is probably yeah. most likely. Or that's, Roman. Oh God, I'm going to say Brock because I think get these hands movement is now like yeah, yeah, the yeah, new yeah, biggest yeah. thing right now, and I think they, I think you never seen. Have we seen a Brock versus Braun one on one like just? Yeah. But yes. did it, but did it go yeah. over well? No, Before, because no, but Braun, well, Braun's more in, in like Braun's, Braun's come a long way, yeah. and when they when they fought last time, he's better sculpted now. Yeah, he's got was he's great balls of fire. Yeah, sure. last year he 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 developed he's developed much better. Oh, I think the problem is you have a Brock Lesnar. Another another conversation that they're going to have to have. Like you put it on, this is the same thing that's always that always happened with like the Undertaker. You're going to have to find an easy a. Uh, 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 not a non easy way to take it off of Braun when that time comes. If you give it to him at WrestleMania, which they should, he deserves it. They should, yeah. And if you think that Brock's leaving again, yep, he's his contract's up after WrestleMania, once again. So if you don't get a deal set up with him and you're going to put Braun over, you need to figure that out. That part needs to be figured out. Yeah. So. They need to plan more than just to WrestleMania. They need to plan to SummerSlam. I even say past that because I've had to talk with Jerry a bunch of times. I personally feel if Braun wins it, who's taking him out? That's I've, what I'm saying. You I have don't. To, I don't. You, I don't see anybody taking him out. Well, I was just listening to an episode of uh, uh, something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard, and he was talking about. They're talking about the Undertaker uh, back in the uh, mid '90s. And they were doing, I think, 95 to 97. And they were talking about how he ended up with the title off of Sid Vicious. And then they had to find a creative way to take the title off of Undertaker and put it on uh, Bret Hart. Now, do you think Bret Hart's going to destroy the Undertaker? No, not at that time. So what they did was they had, you had uh, Shawn Michaels be the special guest referee, but he couldn't screw over 
Brett because if he did, he couldn't wrestle in America anymore. Back when they were doing, yeah. you can't wrestle in America, you can't wrestle in uh, Canada or whatever type right. deal. Or he could never wrestle in America again or yeah. something like that. So he went to hit uh, Bret Hart with a, chair. And he, with a chair, and he ends up hitting Undertaker instead, yep. and then still has to count the one, two, three. So technically, the Undertaker doesn't lose to Bret Hart, but he he loses to Sean. So that that match is what made 1997 Bad Blood. Gotcha. Kane's debut. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the HBK that. was eating those chair shots, man. You see that shit? You, mm. I, mean, I know we we watched yeah. that match together. Yeah. Um, but that's my point. Like, you're gonna have yeah, to find no, a creative yeah, right, way to get right, the title right. off of him. So, coming out of out of the Rumble, you have Shinsuke versus AJ. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That as long as they let them figure out the match, it should be the best. Should be it good. Has to be the should best be, match of the should, night. It should be. It should be. It should be. It should be. Um. Oscar versus Alexa Bliss. It's going to be a good match. It's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, I, I like them both. I love Alexa Bliss. I, I think it ends with with Oscar going I over. I think love she's going to. I think she's going to put her in that uh, submission and done. I think it's time for a title change with that, anyways. I think yeah. Alexa Bliss had it for a long time. Yeah, time for her to give it up. And I think I, she's a good champion too. Don't get me wrong. No, I no, like she Alexa is. Bliss. I I even like back when SmackDown had Naomi as a champion. Like I like the I. I started to buy into Naomi. She, yeah, Naomi was a good champion. And right. I and I buy into like it, it Asuka wins the SummerSlam match between Asuka. It's gotta be it's gotta be Nia. Well, I feel it's gotta be Nia. So right now uh, Nia versus Nia versus Asuka is um Elimination Chamber. I mean See, I don't like that. Don't, but that's I guess that's back from a couple matches, a couple of raw episodes yeah. ago. Yeah, I just so. you gotta you gotta build to that. So the thing the thing I don't wanna see is if Asuka gets her first loss, I don't wanna see that elimination chamber against Nia Jax, but I can't help but have this feeling They do that and then it's a three way at WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, oh, the redemption between Asuka and Nia Jax, but at the same time the match earning of becoming said champion due to her winning the Royal Rumble. Nothing. I'm not saying anything against Nia Jax. I don't think she's a bad superstar. I actually like her a lot. But I feel like with with the way Asuka's going and how on fire she is right now, mm-hmm. don't 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 deflate that. You know, don't pop that balloon just yet. Like, well, if they don't her... if they don't pop that balloon now, it's going to be popped at WrestleMania. You know how a lot of stuff happens like this all the time. I mean, the worst thing to do is is. Have Oscar lose at WrestleMania? I'm telling you, that's not going to go over well. We know this. No, it's not going to go over well, but they don't care. Yeah, you're right. Um, it's a storyline. It's basically yeah. you know, Oscar lost. So yeah. what's what she do to rebound yeah. now? Never lost before. Didn't lose anything up to WrestleMania. So now she lost. So how does she come back year year round circle yeah. again? So well, then the flip side to that is Charlotte versus Ronda. Now we got Ronda came out. I don't give two flying fucks about this match. I I, I think it could be a good match. I Ronda Rousey does not impress me. Even in UFC, once you found out she couldn't box, her ass was done. So you you mean to tell me she's supposed to wrestle? Yeah. Uh yeah, but here's the thing, here's the difference though. The the stuff that she's good at converts to WWE. I I fully get that. Like submissions and then obviously she can just throw somebody at will. Like you or me, I weigh three hundred pounds. She could pick me up and throw me at Dave across the room and think nothing of it. My my thing about it is like like you said earlier, Ronda Ronda Rousey, she ain't been on T V. She's been you know, they've well, kinda they, hiding her trying to make I, well, sure I also, she I also think that's part of because I think they have like a their their contract with uh USA is coming up. So I think they're trying to say well, we have Ronda Rousey, so we're going to have better ratings than we already have. Oh. Get ready. For, and then right before that deal's done, you put her on TV and then say, this is what Ronda Rousey gives you. Yeah. If we have her on our TV, give us more money. I was going to say because the ratings haven't been. They haven't been great. Yeah, they were good coming. The, 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 they got a better rating <clears throat> on Monday coming out of the Royal Rumble versus the WrestleMania 20, uh, Royal, uh, 25. Raw 25. Yeah. Well, usually the, after the Royal Rumble because you're happy to see and talk about some things yeah. after what happened. So usually well, that's always a. 25 was, was a letdown, though. I mean, like you had. It was. Uh, it wasn't great. Like, I think the only thing that was like there was like two positives to that. Was, did, we, did we touch base on that episode? I think we did very, very slightly. Okay. okay. Um, or maybe we just talked about it. 
I don't know. No, privately. you guys, you guys did. You guys talked we hit about on the it. too sweet with, yeah, with yeah, the DX yeah. and stuff oh, like that. Tinkered, I think the only yeah. thing that really came out of that good that I think that the, and the guy, the new guy that like the WWE should push as their face of their franchise is the Miz. Yeah, like I, I totally, he showed up at both events. Like he was, he won the ti- he won the title at uh, yeah, at the Bar- at the Barclay Center, and then he went to the uh, Manhattan Center and celebrated. So like that guy, as much as I, I think his wife's fucking like, not good at all. Put her in the same thing as Michelle McCool. Only she's hotter. She did nothing um, while she was in the WWE wrestling. She yeah. does nothing now. It's yeah. just a paycheck, a waste. Yeah. Well, no, and she she adds a different. She adds a slight element she's to a good the Miz. Mi- to the not yeah. even like she's a good person to be there with the Miz, so the Miz can be more cocky. Having her on his arm, a beautiful blonde that speaks French and shit like that. Puts a little bit added mustard onto him. Yeah. But I think he's really, like, to think this man came from the real yeah, world to being on, uh, what was it? Uh, he was on Tough Enough. Yep. And then, he, and then like, think about it. He's already held the world title. When people think about him, they're like, yeah, he's like the worst world title holder. But he's gotten great. He has gotten really good. He's in, he's in what, eight-time IC champ? Yeah, something like that. So If he doesn't get a match... If if like, if this is the WrestleMania match with him, if you don't do this, this makes no sense at all. Is if they don't have him wrestle Brian Daniel Bryan, if he doesn't wrestle Daniel Bryan, why do they keep teasing it? Why do you keep touching about it? I don't care because right. him versus Shane doesn't make any sense to me. No, Shane versus uh, Daniel Bryan makes no sense to me. I don't care that Daniel Bryan's coming back. Nothing about that excites me. <laughs> but him versus the Miz would actually excite me. Yeah, that'd be. A- That'd be a cool match. Because he's going to wrestle. Whether he wrestles in the WWE or not, he's going to wrestle again. Okay, but how's this going to happen? You have a SmackDown guy. So what? They've oh, But they teased it at the Raw 25. He, when he came out, when Daniel Bryan came out, even though it was on Raw and he's not a Raw manager, they had him come out as a Raw great. And he they introduced him as the manager of SmackDown and he came out. And then when The Miz interrupted them he came out and got face to face with Daniel Bryan and then walked down to the ring and then had his match with Roman so you're still teasing it you have to you have to fucking cash in on it if you avoid it again it's stupid they they're wasting our time wasting cake and paper the That's chances of doing. them doing that is probably high though they're going to probably just waste it you know you know yeah but it, it's the same thing with like the angle they wasted angles first match back wrestling with with the um shield. the shield. Now I'm not saying it's a waste because it, it gave gave you an important guy to be in that match. Right. But he his return match should have been important. It should have been important. It should have been fucking a yeah. build to something, should have been a reason not just hey, Roman Reigns is sick. I agree with you 100% man. I'm with you. I I say the same thing. I would I kind of wanted to see He looked awkward in that Costume. I kind of yeah. wanted to see Kurt Angle versus Triple H after. Would've after cool. I wanted to would've kind of cool. old school, bring it back one one would've last cool. time. Yeah. That would have been cool for me. And that's Angle. I mean, Hall of Famer, greatly deserving, but that would have been a match I would have watched. I'd've oh been no, like, right, that's, that's cool, the like, match to do. Yeah, I would you love, know, I would love have that. him have an argument with with uh, Stephanie. And not get physical. It's like he doesn't have to hit her or anything. Just grab her by the arm and like go. You're not listening to me or something like that, and be aggressive. Right. And then instantly gives you a reason for Triple H to be like, "I'm gonna murder you that with my sledgehammer." Uh, it's yeah. you and me. Uh. I. So, are you excited of what they're doing now? Uh, like we we got what we wanted out of the Royal Rumble. Yeah, we did. Is it exciting? Uh, I, now, like, are you excited to see WrestleMania? Yes. Other than other than AJ Shinsuke, are you excited for WrestleMania? I mean, uh, regardless, if I talk shit about yeah. it, I'm always I, I love WrestleMania Day. Like, I love. I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't love seven hours of TV. <laughs> well, well, it's almost like a full shift at work. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, if I was at say. work and put it on, different story. All right. You know, that would make time go by faster. But I, sitting seven hours, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a lot. Is that what time is it, is it still? I don't know. I know they do, like, the pre-show, which is, ends up being, like, two hours because it's WrestleMania. Yeah. And then they do fucking, like, five hours for WrestleMania. So it's it's a long seven, fucking day. Seven, seven to 12. Seven yeah. To 11. And then you have Monday Night Raw. 
Yeah. And then Tuesday night SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you factor in everything, you have you have the um was it Hall of Fame's on Friday. Yeah. Saturday's takeover. Yeah. And then WrestleMania. So within within a five days yeah. you have five days straight of wrestling. Yeah. Of pure like and it's not obviously the the um the Hall of Fame's not a technically a wrestling event it's a it's it's a thank you to like the greats or, yeah. or whatever you want to call it it's not rest there's no wrestling in the ring but that's a fucking like three hour show yeah it's always is but it's it's stacked this year goldberg dudley boys who else just got in on the, on the hall of fame now i think they're gonna announce them tomorrow at some point yeah a like i think like Chi- I, people, I feel right? like china's gonna get in this year well i hope she so. might be the I, I she really... might be the deceased Entry like the, to the Hall of Fame, yeah, like the like the uh, memorial. Yeah, yeah, I think she's going to be the one um, because Stephanie and Triple H both acknowledged her at Raw twenty five. Yeah, so I think she's going to be the. I hope so, man. She, I think so. She she, 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 she deserves, deserves it at yeah. this point. Like as much as people give her shit and whatever, like that she, woman that she, one, she kicked ass in the yeah, ring. She's yeah, eighth wonder and, of the world. I mean, yeah, how can and, you not and. She a lot of people gave her shit at the beginning of her career for looking too mannish. That woman went out and got so many surgeries to try to make herself more feminine. Like, she just... And she... Like, watching her in videos and stuff, like, not as China, the, ninth, the eighth wonder of the world, when she was just... Uh, I forgot her, what her real name is. It's like... Um, Joni. I think her real name is Joni. When she's just Joni... She's a woman, man. Like, she's got feelings. She's got needs. She's a human being. Like... People forget that, and that's the woman that, like, I feel like she doesn't get enough credit for pushing the women to where they were. Like, she was big enough to fuck up men, and she was in, like, Playboy. You know what I mean? Like, and she did it. She did it all. And she also has a porno. Yeah, that's later in her career. Made made some bad decisions. But, you know what I mean? Like, Real bad. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It's, it's. It's going to be an interesting event, like you said, Goldberg, um, the Dudley Boys. Like that's cool. I'm excited for that. I, I Obviously, was, that means the Dudley Boys are not wrestling anymore in the WWE. They're 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 out. Well, yeah. but uh, Bubba Ray, he retired, right? Like he retired yeah, at Bob, a House of Hardcore. Yeah, like he he did his last match for Ring of Honor and then did a, a House of Hardcore and retired in in. I it was either Philly or New York. I think it was New York because he's from New York. I think it was in New York. Probably was New York. Yeah. I'm just happy to see him get in. Get in. I mean, the Dudley boys are... Devon, like, I think felt like he should have gotten more later on in his career. I mean, they did the whole, like, religious thing, and I didn't think that was very good. The Reverend Devon. Nobody Devon. about that. Yeah, no. that's what I'm saying. Like, it wasn't a good gimmick, but he's a great... He's another one. Like, just really good wrestler. Yeah. Does his job. Yeah. Goes out there every night, gives you his all. And he, then... I mean, he could be Marty Jannetty, where he's just pigeon-held as a, as a tag team guy, and then... Let's it bother him, and then doesn't do anything with himself. Right, like Marty Jenny's still like seen at multiple events every week, getting hammered, yeah. being crazy. Like Devon's a married man, got kids, runs the school in Florida. They got a school up in Danbury now. Mm-hmm. Like he gets what it's like to not be a professional wrestler anymore, just be a regular uh, dad yeah. and do do his you know living his life and you, and you know for most most of those guys it's really hard to kind of break out of the wrestling world because yeah. that's all you know that's all you know who inducts Goldberg Ooh. long shot I'm gonna say long 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 shot Sting maybe I, I you know who I the only reason I say that is because the the history between the two of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if anybody else does it, I, I don't know who would who would do that, but I would have to say Sting. I'm thinking, yeah, either him or um, it's either him. I I think maybe Bischoff. I was I was gonna I'll okay. say Bischoff. Yeah, you know, Bischoff. who's the guy that I think that would do it? Because I think he's the one that might have discovered him at a gym. Like he obviously. Was already Bill Goldberg, a professional athlete. Right. But I think the guy that wasn't wasn't you know, connect- that, you know that already went to the Atlanta Falcons practice. Like you know what, I want to see that guy. Right well, I think there. he was connected to Lex Luger at one point. Yeah, oh. which would be cool. But like Lex Luger is like he's a piece. Of shit. He's in a, well, he's also in a wheelchair. Yeah, so <laughs> you can't really have him. No, you can't have a dunk doing him. it. But I think uh, and then who would, who would be inducting China? 
Xbox. Triple H. <laughs> Jesus, man. Dude, Triple that's H. That's the only op- I mean, unless, unless, unless you have DX. Triple that's H. what I think you should do. Sean and yes, Hunter should all do of it. them. Sean and well, Hunter. no, all of them. I, yeah, I, I, say, all them. I say all of them, but it's probably going to be Triple H mostly. Yeah. Because Triple H and uh, their, their history and stuff like that. But yeah, it's Triple H. He has his own thing, so... Whenever Triple H wants to get wants to get a little light to shine, you know yeah. he's going to come out yeah. and do whatever. So, and then the Dudley Boys gonna be Paul Heyman. Have to be. Yeah. I, you know what though? Like you know, what? I say that, but Have Tommy to Dreamer, or him too. Yeah, Tommy Dreamer's got a lot of connections with them. I mean, that would be you awesome. Tommy, you can bring out Raven. You can bring out. Well, no, I'm just saying, like guys that like he they were connected to like like Tommy and Bubba Ray and like Taz. We're like the three guys that were big on helping, you know, helping Paul run ECW. So nope. that's why, like, well, knowing WWE, they'll probably have Spike induct them. <sighs> Maybe, yeah, but that's not bad. I, At I, least it's a Dudley boy. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It makes sense, Spike Dudley. I, okay, yeah. I'm just trying to think of who else they can induct. Who's on oh, the celebrity is uh, Kid Rock. What? He's the Kid Rock. Yeah, Kid Rock's the celebrity. Yeah, he got the celebrity one, so. He's performed at like multiple events for them. He he's, loves he loves WWE. Yeah. He's he's a front runner. I mean, why not? I mean, he's he's been there how many times so far? He's uh, been to a couple. Of, he's been to a bunch. He's played live at a bunch of events. I think he did live. Uh, did he do a WrestleMania one year? I don't know. I know. I know he did. Like, didn't he do like a uh, a Raw where he did uh, ultimate? Uh, I don't know why I keep saying no, that. Undertaker. He did. Didn't he do the Undertaker? America Badass. He made his entrance once. Oh, Ameri- yeah, like yeah. live yeah. entrance for him once. So did Limp Bizkit. Okay. I know, but nobody cares about Limp Bizkit. Fred Durst, eat a dick. Okay. Dave, as, as Dave laughs in the background. Dave, Dave loves Limp Bizkit. Fred Durst, eat a dick. No. <laughs> but, uh, no, it just, I, I'm excited for what's going on coming up. Um... Still holding my reservations because, you know, as much as Vince is focused on being an XFL guy, yeah. uh, could he still fuck shit up? Yeah, because he's Vince McMahon and he's still in control until the day he dies. Yeah. Which I don't picture him ever relinquishing it unless it's like the, he sees the product I don't go picture, way down. I don't picture Vince ever dying. That too. Yeah, I think he's going to be one of those guys that's like 85, still in the gym, pumping it out, and then just done. No, you know, you know what's like, going to happen? They're going to find him in the gym. They're going to put his consciousness inside like this chip and insert it into like one of those human robots that people are sharing all these videos about. Oh, Vince, the love dolls? Vince will live forever. <laughs> Could be a love doll. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> no chance to walk into the ring. <laughs> so yeah, his, str- his strut is like the funniest thing ever. Oh that, he has the. He's like a jerk off robot. Yeah. yeah. Did you, uh, you know, how, you the famous thing where he does the ear pulling in the yeah. ring when uh, who was it? Uh, Stone Cold comes out or whatever. The Rock or one of one of the two when he's like yanking his ear really hard. It was supposed to be like he was supposed to yank his ear very gently, like just touch his ear to let them know to like, hey, hit the music for this or something or hit the cue this. And they they had an issue in the truck and it wasn't happening. So he was getting pissed and like yanking his ear and he almost like destroyed his ear lo- eardrum trying to like show up because he gets that frustrated that quickly. Jesus. Uh, oh, man. So anyway. It just unbelievable the Royal Rumble. I'm still like breath taken away from it, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if the payoff happens. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, I hope it does this time. All right. So then we'll, uh, we'll hit on one thing we really want to talk about. Yes. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? So we got one, a new trailer for Deadpool. Uh, What'd you think, Jerry? All right. Uh, I remember seeing the promo picture of Cable mm-hmm. uh, and really not being a fan of the look and my reasoning as to why, you know, Josh Brolin having him be two separate Marvel characters. And and I, I get it, people listening. Yeah, one is... one. Is Fox the other one? Is Marvel Studios? I get that, but 
Fox is being didn't they get bought out? Their studios got bought out. By, yeah, yeah. This by is Disney, like, right? So whatever we get now for like X Men and Deadpool, like, yeah. This is like the kind Marvel, of the tier end, yeah, of what you know. So anyway, uh, the trailer you know opens up with um, the cameras on Cable's uh, eye, uh, and he's like talking about like you know what happens in the future and has you know find his way into the past or whatever. <laughs> they show Josh Brolin with the green screen sleeve on. And Deadpool pauses the trailer and says, like, oh, I can do it better myself, then whatever, whatever. Seeing Cable in action, in live action, Mm -hmm. um, I think I should kind of take a back seat to my opinion months prior. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess it's got to be one of those things where i got to kind of just need to see a little bit more and see the movie mm-hmm. for me to really understand if I, if I like this or not. I'm still, I'm still on Stephen Lang being cable. I'm still on that, but Josh Rowland, he's, he, I mean, he sounds, he sounds good and he looks good. I mean, I, you know, I, that wasn't, they put the teddy bear on him. That's that right there was the biggest thing to me. So if you're not going to put him in blue and yellow, then at least put the fucking bear on, on him. Well, it's funny because that's, that's totally plays into how they, shot the last movie it's like hey we had the he had he had the toy unicorn yeah and now the teddy bear so like that's going to be sold like a motherfucker oh dude absolutely that's going to be on every t-shirt it's just him holding a teddy bear what about you i liked it like you said i'm i'm holding my reservations on it. i'm excited about it for the simple fact that he looks good yeah. um when he when he starts blocking the shots with his arm i i don't hate it but i don't love it um, something about the arm looked a little different to me that I that I that I would picture in my once again, what you see on screen. Well, if I wanted to fucking make it that you know the way I picture in my head, that, that that's what the way they see it in their head. I have a view in my head. I have action figures. I have comics of way I see that arm. Yeah, I'm sure for whatever reason they do different things to make it look a little bit different. But at least it looks like a fucking like metal arm. It's not. Whatever. Yeah, it has like the like muscle shape. In it. Yeah, which is cool. Which is cool. But the, a, but the cable we're used to is just like one solid. Kinda. Yeah. I mean, there's, I've seen figures where they do it a little bit differently, yeah. and it looks cool. I just think that they made it look like there's like a like a almost like not a piece of like a shield, but it's just like a solid piece of metal yeah. on his forearm to like block shots, which I don't really like. Yeah. But. Hey man, like until I see the movie, I can't really say yeah. anything. Like I was excited for um, Last Jedi, and I was disappointed with some of that. But I mean, y- you got to be excited for stuff. Like, yeah. otherwise, you're just gonna go through life being boring. Pretty you know much. What I mean, yeah. like life's too short to not be excited. And that's the other thing. Like we're not. I don't make the movie. I, you know what I mean. Like I don't know why they made decisions the way they did them. Uh it's going to be good. Ryan Reynolds is going to be fucking awesome. Uh, we haven't seen really Deadpool in the Deadpool costume. Like, we've seen the, his doll yeah. version of him. And then, like, um, they see him, like, changing in the, the original teaser trailer. Yeah, the phone booth. The phone booth. Yeah. But, like, it, not a lot of um, him in the, in the outfit, which is going to be cool. Like, there's a lot of him... With the fucked up face sitting there, like I like the fact that like they keep showing him like hanging out with the blind lady, sitting there in his like normal clothes, like showing that like it's not just all Deadpool all the time. Right. He's you know right. he's Wade Wilson. Yeah. Right. Wilson. Yep. Wade Wilson. Yep. Yep. Got it right. Um, Remember, Deathstroke is Slade. Slade Wilson. Yeah. There you go. Um, so the Venom teaser. What'd you think? <sighs> Dude. I like that they didn't show you what Venom's going to look like yet. Yeah. I, I, I like that. Like, keep me wanting more mm-hmm. and more. And that's the other issue I have with a lot of trailers and teasers. They give you too much. Yeah. I want to be surprised. Like, don't... They, all these commercials, they should not show you the final appearance of Venom until you see that movie. So, one thing I did notice uh, from the teaser... I loved, loved it, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Uh, the thing about now Tom Hod- Tom Hardy is Eddie Brock. Yep. Okay. Um, I f- 
they're going a different, like whole different direction with uh, with with Eddie Brock in the movie here. He's not like he's not going to be the, the bodybuilding photographer. He seems like he's just like a test subject for something. It, yeah, I, I don't know how he ends up being the subject to it. Like they haven't really, obviously, we haven't. Right. Yeah. We don't know anything about it. Um, he also could be like he's a college student going to school for photography and to make extra money to go through college. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that could work. Because they do that in college. There's a lot of college kids, especially down in Yale, they do that. I just want to know who, like, the bad guy's going to be. Because Ven- Venom-, Venom is is neutral, so yeah. he only does things that benefit him. Mm-hmm. So if he's going to help Spider-Man, he'll do it. If he's going to go against him, he'll do it. But didn't they didn't they say, like, who might be the the person he faces in that movie, like the character. I don't remember ever reading anything about Oh, that. yeah, no, I saw... Because it's not Spider-Man, is it? No, because he, it's going to be shot in... Uh, it's shot and it's supposed to be happening in San Francisco. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be, I guess, he has, like... I don't know this for sure, but from what I've heard from um, reports is you're going to get him and Spider-Man run into each other. Spider-Man basically tells him to get out of town. Okay. And he leaves. And then ends up in San Francisco. Okay. So that's what I've heard, is that we are going to see Spider-Man. We are. They are going to interact, but he's going to go to uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. Which is different, because usually a lot of Marvel try to stay in New York. Especially, yeah. Especially with the way you you did the uh, Spider-Man. You want him in, in New York. Yeah. Which just means there's going to be a movie. There's going to be a Spider-Man and Venom movie. Well, like, you know, uh, they had Iron Man 3, Tony yeah. Stark, who yeah. is in California. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what it is. Like, they, yeah. they can touch on it. Right. it, can, it can, they can interject the world. Mm-hmm. It's going to be good. Um, I think Tom Hardy's a great actor. Yeah, I, I love that he's Venom. And I like that, I really do like the fact that he's Venom. Yeah. Like, it bothered me that he was Bane, because mm-hmm. I don't think he's tall enough. Yeah. But Venom's supposed to be a big guy, but he doesn't have to be massive for the some tall. Like he doesn't have to be ridiculously right. tall because if you every every drawing, every photo, every figure I've ever seen of, of Venom, he's fucking stout. Yeah, and huge upper body. Yeah, short. Yeah, but Venom. So and he hunches a little, so you could make him. Right. He doesn't need to be super tall. Well, the the the, the symbiote. When it form when it bonds to you, yeah. it brings out what you think you like, what you truly want to be, mm. like size, shapes, whatever, whatever. So you know, in the comics, Eddie Brock is already in shape. He's already in shape. He's yeah. already like over six feet tall. So Venom bonded to, or the the symbiote bonded to him, and his brain waves read that you know, like uh, bodybuilder, whatever, whatever, yeah. and just made him bigger. Yeah. Well, Tom Hardy's. Five. He's five eight. Five eight. Yeah, yeah. he's not tall. He's short. So, but it, it could it could be one of those things where when it latches onto him, yeah, it'll be what he's always want. Like maybe this Eddie Brock is insecure about his height. Maybe he doesn't think he's big enough or whatever. Yeah. So when it happens to him, he's gonna just kind of blow up. So the other news. Anything but Topher Grace is fine. Yeah. So the other news that came out, who they're gonna have play the Joker? You heard about that? Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. Any anything to say about it? I I I went on a rant and had an argument with uh Chad Dizzle Davis from uh Pass the F and Popcorn. We him and I have gone back and forth on this multiple times. I don't like the idea I hate of an origin story. Oh, you don't want an origin story? No. Why? We've talked about this. I don't like the fact that you're gonna tell me who the Joker is. Don't. His whole shtick is he tells everybody a different story. Whatever makes it convenient for him at that moment yeah. and can, like... And I like that. Like, it's an eeriness. Like, what are his motives? You, nobody knows. Like, that's the whole point. He's supposed to be a mysterious character. A joker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I also think if you're going to do an origin story and you're going to have Joaquin Phoenix play him, which is not a bad choice. I think he could do it. Um, I wanted Leo so bad. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio would have killed that role. He was pretty much the Joker in Django. <laughs> yeah, only only a slave owning uh, Joker. Yeah, that's a little. That's a stretch. <laughs> but um, I also think if you're gonna do that, 
Yeah. It should just be him telling multiple stories. And then you never really know what his origin is. Well, that will... That should be the tease. Yeah, that, that, that's what's in the comics. He's like... But, that's what I yeah, hope. Yeah, what he said... But from all accounts and everyone that I've talked to, like, like Chad's like, no, man, I really want to know where... I don't. I want it to keep keep that fucking hidden from me. That's what makes him so fucking weird and creepy when he fucking wants to not kill Batman. Yeah. He says he does, and then when he gets him there, he does. He takes his time and wants to toy with him. Like, there has to be a reason. The reason is you don't know his reasons. Right, He's right. so fucking out there. Like, that's the whole point. That's why I like him for what he is. Like, I, it, is the Joker my favorite you know, villain? No, but like he's a great villain, right. and he's always everyone else's top one or two. Mm-hmm. So it is what it is. I just think that he's going to be a good actor. He's going to play it well. I didn't like the way they did him in Suicide Squad, so I don't blame that on Jared Leto. I think Jared Leto is a good actor. Um, but we'll see. I think he deserved a shot to actually show a good Joker. Yeah. But you, they already fucked it up with, with yeah, Suicide it's, Squad. It's, it's too late now. I, I feel like if they re reimagined his Joker, we would all just still see Suicide Squad. And Joker. they shouldn't have killed Common. I mean, that's I'm sorry. Yeah, they fucked that up. But, uh, so Jerry, let's do a little bit of collectibles. I actually have some to talk about. All right. Collectibles. What do you got, Jerry? So, uh, my newly fiance um, surprised me with a couple things. Uh, the Toys R Us exclusive Street Fighter V M Bison uh, figure from Storm Collectibles, but in alternate color. So I have already bought in the red one, have yeah. that at home, but now he's in green and yellow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's only a couple things. And she bought me uh, head scouters from... A, Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, and didn't we? Didn't you pick them up at New York Comic Con? So I told her the story. I'm like, yeah, me and Aaron went to New York Comic Con. I, f- I forgot what year we went. This is probably yeah. five years ago now. Yeah, and I, I said, you know, th- those were like part of the exclusives. Yeah. So we just wait in line, you know, one per person, whatever, and then, you know, it came with three different scouters: a blue visor, green, and red. And yep. she bought me, the, but these ones are from the Dragon Ball Super, uh, the new show that. It's, well, it's been out, but it's the most recent one. So, um, yeah, she got me those, and uh, it's awesome. I mean, I, I, it's cool. Like you hit the button, it reads like the power level and stuff yeah. like that. I kind of like to, you know, give that feel yeah. to the show. So yeah, that that's what I got. That's this, cool for this episode. Yeah, nice. And what did you pick up today? Oh, and today, uh, my co-host Aaron Holiday over here sold me a CM Punk micro brawler. From Pro Wrestling From Tees. From Pro Wrestling Tees. Um, so, I love these things. These are awesome. Um, they fit in scale to the WWF um, mystery minis that yeah, they have. Yeah, And I like these. I, you know what? And I think these... I, I like these better. I, think these I do better. and I don't. Is it because... I mean, of, there's a reason why I sold you that. Fuck oh, CM Punk. I mean, I know you're a huge fan of CM Punk, so... I know but, um... No, but I... I, I, I so to, to piggyback off of that, I obviously uh, I bought a five pack of them from uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. They were having a sale, uh, and they were all mysteries. You couldn't you couldn't pick who you got. Otherwise, I would have probably changed a little bit. Obviously, I wouldn't be selling you CM Punk if I picked out a guy that I wanted. Right. But uh, I got CM Punk, Big Daddy Vader, uh, Big Bet, Big Daddy Vader, Big right? Van, Big Van Vader. But didn't they call him Big Daddy as well too? Like there's, he had like multiple names. So Vader like Vader went by a bunch like Vader time like yeah. shit like that and then um, I obviously got Kenny Omega which you know Jerry's trying to sneak out of here with uh, <laughs> Joey Ryan and um, oh god uh, Pentagon Junior yep so love them I think they're really cool I think my favorite. Yeah. It might be Joey Ryan. Yeah, that, I'm, I just think it fits him very well. But the Pentagon's really good, and so is the. They're all good. Yeah. Um, the only one that I've seen online that I didn't like was Cody's, just because it's like him in a suit. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, he just started doing that. Like, I get it. You want to be like, 
as up to date as possible. He just looks kind of corny, right? With holding a ring and like I don't, it doesn't do anything. But it's the Ring of Honor ring. It doesn't do anything for me. It's literally the Ring of Honor. I, I, <laughs> I, I get it. And um, what else did I just recently get? Oh, uh, today actually, um, this morning I actually made my usual shopping run to Walmart. Yep. Did my grocery shopping. Picked up. Uh, they're doing a. I think it's a. Um, I forgot what what the, what the name of the line is, but they're doing a lot of throwback characters. I picked up not. I, I picked this up today. I picked up uh, Mean Gene Okerlund. Nice, but it's it's an elite. So there's like a whole. So he has the black coat on his usual black with the WWF logo, but it doesn't. It's not WWF. It's the old school WWE logo. Yeah, and then they have literally interchangeable waist. You can take his whole upper torso off, pop his head off, and pop it onto another torso and put it back into the body. It's a red, oh, coat, that's cool. red coat. So yeah. it's not like cheap plastic no, peel no. off. It's a whole oh, torso. that's cool. Yeah, so I picked that up today. And then last week I picked up, they have the, they, they're, they're, they're not retros, they're uh, like throwback figures, but they did a basic line and a elite line. Obviously they did Mean Gene uh, line. You had Mean Gene... Yokozuna, Ultimate Warrior, and Six. Wow. From the NWO, and he comes with the NWO shirt and stuff. Um, But then they did the basic line. They did uh, Million Dollar Man, um, uh, Ravishing Rick Rude, uh, Cowboy Bob Wharton, and um, who was the fourth one? Uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter. And if you bought them all, you take the – on the bottom of the packaging, it had a piece – and every one of them came with a different piece uh, to build uh, Howard Finkel. Yeah. So you could build Howard Finkel. So you could do like an old school vibe. And then the elites came with different parts of a stage set. So you could do an interview with Mean Gene. Oh, that's cool. Or you could do, uh, and then in the ring you could have Howard Finkel, Howard Finkel stand in the ring. And then, uh, so I picked up the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and then the Ravishing Rick Rude because they are wearing the same gear as the original Hasbro's. Yeah. They never put those out. So they finally made figures to match your Hasbro's. So I picked those up. Good. And good hunt, man. Yeah. That's yeah, it was, it was it was luck. Yeah. Luck because I haven't seen a Mean Gene. I saw it this morning and I had to get it. Mean Gene's worth it, man. Oh, he's the man. Mean Gene's the shit. I love Mean Gene. So Um so yeah, uh, we're going to try to hit up WrestleFest. Yes. That's probably going to happen right after our next episode. So we're going to have this episode's going to be out, and then two weeks from now will be the 25th? Yep. 25th, I think. And then uh, we're going the second to see um, WrestleFest. We're going to meet the Young Bucks. Well, you're going to meet the Young Bucks. We're going to meet Marty Skrull. <laughs> um, I'm getting there I'm excited. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I took the day off from work. Oh, yeah, I took the day off from work. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be driving up from, uh, from work. I will not be getting there at 3 a.m. <laughs> 3 p.m., sorry. Aaron did not take the day I off. I did not take the day off. I took the day off uh, last week, uh, earlier this week. I took a day off. Um, as soon as I found out my team was in the Super Bowl, took the day off. Apparently, everybody thought it was because I took the day off because I wanted to, to sob. It was not to sob. It was to nurse a hangover. So, there you go. Aaron was off on Monday due to a hangover. I was. I mean, as but as, I had put in for it two was. weeks before that, you know, um, before the loss. <laughs> uh, so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of here. WECP is out. Good night. If you smell what the rock is cooking. <laughs>